So let's get started. So welcome everybody to Dosing 201, Tips for Optimizing Sleep and Recovery with myself, Taylor, registered herbalist. Um, so I wanted to start off first by going over today's agenda. So first we're just gonna do a little introduction of myself and Michaela, who is my moderator here and helping me out in the chat box today. Uh, then we're gonna have our presentation and then we'll open up, of course, to some questions and comments. And then, of course, our closing remarks, including a discount code. Just thanking you guys for being here today with us. So first to start out, I just wanted to introduce myself again. My name is Taylor Appel. I'm a clinical herbalist at Apothecary and Educator. Um, I am also a registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild, and I'm pursuing a master's degree in functional nutrition. Um, I'm truly passionate um, about bridging our medicine and our spice cabinets together and utilizing plants and functional foods um, as ways as to support our health in dynamic ways um, and really find functional therapeutic options for you to reach your health goals. Um, I also wanted to introduce Michaela. As I mentioned, our moderator, she'll be in the chat box today. Uh, she's another herbalist here at Apothecary and she'll be able to answer some of your questions as we move along. Before I get started, I did also wanna mention as far as questions go, I can't answer any uh, specific medical questions that you may have about medications or your specific medical conditions. Um, please book a consultation with myself if you would like to learn more about how herbs can support your specific medical needs. Um, and Michaela will pop a link to that consult page right in the chat box. And yeah, and I just wanted to invite you guys again to please utilize the chat box for any of your questions as we move along with today's presentation. Um, I'd love to hear your questions you might have and we'll get to those at the end. So let's get started with the importance of proper sleep and recovery. So first off, I just wanted to say talking about sleep and recovery. So sleep, of course, every night we are getting, you know, um, hopefully seven to nine hours of deep sleep and recovery. I am referring to after any stressful process, and this can be recovering from an illness. This could be even exercise because exercise itself is also an inflammatory and stressful process. So we have to be taking care of our bodies um, and recovering in optimal ways so that we can um, have quality health and quality lives. So this is gonna cover those topics. Um, so as you see here, sleep and recovery are very much essential for physical and emotional well-being, as well as a, a myriad of other processes um, in our body. And I'm sure you've heard this all before, but deep restorative sleep is truly critical to anybody's health, especially if you're moving with um, a physical or emotional disease. It definitely takes even more sleep and recovery time uh, to help support people moving with those types of conditions. So just a few facts about sleep. If you didn't know, we spend almost one third of our lives asleep. And there are actually over 70 known sleep disorders. Um, and as I mentioned before, too, you know, if you're moving with any type of physical or emotional condition, you are also going to need more sleep because sleep will be disrupted um, innately by having certain um, conditions. So uh, when we get less optimal sleep, we definitely start to accrue something called sleep debt. So sleep debt basically can happen even when you're getting as little as one hour less um, of the needed amount of sleep each night. And again, that's around seven to nine hours each night. So when we start to get, you know, five, six hours night after night, we can start to get sleep debt. And that can really take a toll on our health in all of these ways highlighted on this slide. So the five factors I wanna go over today, uh, particularly that impact sleep and recovery, and yes, there are many others that can definitely impact your unique sleep um, you know, needs, especially if you are moving with a specific health condition, but in general, um, sleep hygiene, uh, regular movement and exercise, 
um, hydration and electrolytes, nutrition and our eating habits, and of course, stress. And with stress, we'll be talking about some herbal supports, especially adaptogens and nervines and sedatives and relaxant herbs. So let's start out with sleep hygiene. So sleep, so research actually estimates that around 60 million adults in the United States suffer from some form of insomnia. So that means that they're, they're experiencing disrupted sleep for at least, um, at least, sorry, they're experiencing um, disrupted sleep consistently over a three month period or longer. So I, many people don't even realize that they are actually moving with insomnia. Um, this means waking up multiple times in the middle of the night, uh, trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep, all of these things can lead to an insomnia uh, type of condition. And many people don't also realize that, um, that changing your sleep hygiene can actually be critical to improving and optimizing your ability to, to recover. And especially from things like illnesses, if you're moving with those critical conditions, those diseases, acute or chronic. So optimizing your sleep hygiene can really change the entire way that you sleep or something we call our sleep efficiency. So the amount of time we spend in bed to the amount of time that we are actually asleep. So talking about sleep hygiene, we're highlighting things like a dark room, making sure we have block, uh, black out curtains um, as needed if we have a lot of street lamps coming into our bedroom, um, a colder temperature room. Research has found around 68 degrees is actually ideal and even a little cooler is better um, as far as knocking us into REM sleep, which is that recovery mode of sleep uh, that we really is critical each night. So minimizing our blue light exposure, we're thinking about our TVs, our phones, our laptops, using them in bed, wanting to minimize that or utilizing something like a red light um, or blue light blocking glasses. That's a great way to get around that without impacting your sleep quality. Clean air or having an open window, again, going back to a colder temperature too, just having that fresh air for circulation in the room. Um, improve sleep quality, making your bed comfortable. So investing in um, high quality pillow sheets, comforter, anything that you can afford right now to make your bed more comfortable will definitely improve your sleep hygiene. Having regular sleep wake cycles. So this is very important, especially on the weekends. A lot of people like to sleep in, but really research has shown that if you keep your sleep wake cycle is consistent, you're actually going to see a lot more um, sleep efficiency. So again, the amount we are actually time we are spending in bed to the amount of time we are spending asleep is going to improve. So just being consistent with your sleep cycles on vacation, on weekends is really important. Sleeping alone is ideal, but of course, if you're in a relationship, you know, just navigating that without pets is also ideal. Um, using the bedroom for sleep only, so trying to not use your bed for work or school or studying. Um, using stress reduction techniques, which I'll also go over in a later slide uh, before bed to help lower our cortisol levels, to help relax the mind and the body. And of course, making our room a sanctuary. I love to use aromatherapy. Things like lavender have been very well documented to improve sleep quality and also to help um, downregulate our nervous system. So, you know, um, utilizing diffusers in your bedroom for aromatherapy purposes is a great way to kind of just give that vibe. Um, that's a great way to improve your sleep hygiene. So next I'd like to go over movement and exercise and why that's actually critical to our sleep. So as I mentioned before, exercise is also a process that we need to, um, acknowledge as being stressful on the body. So we do need to acknowledge then the recovery process that needs to happen afterward. Um, so with regular movement in general, um, research has highlighted that even simple walking has been correlated with all around positive health benefits from blood sugar regulation to lowering stress levels. And of course, as I said, more restful sleep and easier recovery periods. 
So really the gold standard is to try and move your body every single day for at least 20 minutes or more. You know, exercise doesn't have to be regimented. It can also be just conscious effort to uh, move your body every day. You know, try parking further in the parking lot when you're at the grocery store, making you have to walk just a little bit further. Take the stairs whenever possible. Um, use a bathroom that's on the other side of your office building, just so you get that few extra steps in each day. That's really going to help the body to be able to um, enter that sleep and relax mode just a bit more easily at night. So as I have there at the bottom, what to do, really aim for 20 to 40 minutes a day um, and mix it up between cardio and lifting, you know, heavy things as well, because that's also going to exhaust our bodies in a very good way. So um, next, I wanted to talk about, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> My slides skipped around there. Uh, we are at hydration. So um, with exercise, as I was saying, we also have to be thinking about the recovery process, which includes hydration. So hydration really wouldn't be a complete process without electrolytes. So electrolytes are actually those minerals that carry the electric charge throughout our body and they help cellular processes occur. Hundreds of thousands of cellular processes would not be able to happen without having the proper amount of minerals or electrolytes um, in our bodies at all times. And when we're hydrating just with plain water, we're sometimes actually just diluting um, the amount of electrolytes available. Um, so we want to make sure we're adding that back into our water or into our food sources um, to ensure that we are having proper recovery and proper uh, cellular function, right, throughout the entire body. So as you see here, electrolytes are really essential for a wide range of um, events in the body. Um, they optimize our recovery, they support stable energy levels, they improve all of our cognitive function, um, and of course, they're going to help with the production of stress-reducing hormones as well. And another big one is with detoxification, which um, also goes into stress hormones and mood and focus and really everything, um, because when our detoxification pathways aren't working optimally, you know, things can build up in the body and we have imbalances. Um, and especially with energy and sleep, that can definitely become apparent. So the most supportive way really to replenish our electrolytes and to ensure you're not running on empty is by adding them back into your water, as I was saying before. My favorite way to do this is really just using uh, mineral drops, like trace mineral drops or uh or electrolyte packets like LMNT packets. I like both of those brands. They're very simple ingredients. They utilize high quality magnesium, potassium, calcium, and sodium, which are just some examples of electrolytes you absolutely need to be having in our daily diets in order to uh, recover and sleep optimally. So what to do? So we're gonna be adding those into our water um, you can also be using, you know, homemade recipes like high quality sea salt, cream of tartar, which cream of tartar is a great source of potassium, uh, lemon and lime and honey. I like to always go for a local honey so you can be supporting your seasonal allergies as well. Um, there are things out there for adrenal cocktails, which are like mocktails, but um, they utilize, they are also alcohol free and they utilize a recipe kind of seen here with a high quality salt, a cream of tartar, lemon lime, and a version of this. Um, and then a lot of times I also like to add ashwagandha to my adrenal cocktails and I'll speak more to ashwagandha a little bit later, but being that is an adaptogenic herb, it is just going to be very supportive for our stress reduction and just stress resilience in general. Um, so I definitely invite you to check out some adrenal cocktail recipes and just start to implement, start to include those into your daily uh, routine as part of your hydration. And you'll really see that your sleep is just going to be that much deeper and that much more um, quality. 
So of the um, electrolytes, I really wanted to talk about magnesium. So I know a lot of people like to take magnesium for sleep support, and it is absolutely a fantastic electrolyte that supports our sleep. It actually supports over 300 metabolic processes in the body. So it's a really important one that we are making sure that we are um, optimally, uh, that we have optimal levels of. So magnesium is also one of those um, nutrients that across the board, people are moving with depletions. So we like to get magnesium in wherever we can. There are many different forms of magnesium. So here I've highlighted the forms of magnesium that are specifically going to support sleep and recovery. There's also magnesium out there to support things like constipation, um, and gastrointestinal upset. And those are great forms of magnesium as well. But today I'm focusing on these forms of magnesium. So chloride is going to help with the sore muscles and joints. Glycinate is very relaxing to the mind and the body. It's also very easy on the gut. If you are someone that has a bit of gut sensitivities, that could be a great one to utilize. Um, sulfate is going to be very good for supporting our detox pathways and relaxing our bodies and our muscles. Uh, taurate is great for blood sugar regulation, our heart health, and is also very calming. And threonate is actually one of my favorites because it is very supportive for migraines as well. So if you're someone that tends to have tension headaches at night or migraines, that could be a great one to explore. Um, and these can be found in oral um, applications as well as topical. And I love to invite clients to utilize topical applications of magnesium because actually our skin is just as efficient, if not more, at absorbing and utilizing magnesium. So they make tons of magnesium sprays. And I love to do magnesium and Epsom salt baths. Um, a great way to get uh, your magnesium in is literally just soaking in a bath of magnesium. And I love to always add herbs into my bath too, just to support that uh, calming effect. Um, so I also wanted to talk about how magnesium is also found naturally in an abundance of foods and herbs. So by eating these foods, Every single day, I like to tell people to get, you know, one to two servings at least of a magnesium rich food into your daily diet. Um, you're very much supporting your sleep and recovery cycles. So things like dark leafy greens and seeds, beans and legumes, fish, whole grains, nuts, um, specifically avocados, yogurt, bananas, and dark chocolate. And we want to aim for 85% or greater on the dark chocolate, as well as checking where um, our dark chocolate is coming from. Um, we want to make sure it's not contaminated with things like lead and all those other um, toxins that uh, unfortunately tend to be found in a lot of chocolates and things like that. We do always want to be buying these things organic when possible. Um, or at least sticking to the dirty dozen. Um, so the dirty dozen is referring to the 12 things you should always buy organic. Um, but these here, you know, if you can try and get them organic, try and get them into your diet every single day and really su support um, that healthy sleep and recovery cycle. So next I wanted to touch on nutrition. So my four big you know, standouts for sleep and healthy recovery for nutrition are these listed here. And of course, there are others that are going to be unique to your own health journey. Um, but this is just what I see across the board to be a common denominator um, when it comes to improper sleep or um, just sleep quality just not being really there. So first, blood sugar regulation. So if our blood sugar is all over the place, if we um, are tired in the morning and wired at night, you know, that's definitely a sign that our blood sugar and our hormones may need to be a little bit more inspected and just, uh, just focused on and rebalanced. 
So, you know, walking after meals, eating dressed carbs. So by that, I mean never eating or trying not to eat carbohydrates alone, pairing them with protein, pairing them with fat, pairing them with fiber. That's really the way to go. So as I was just mentioning, refueling with a balanced meal or snack every few hours um, as your body needs, you know, to make sure you're not having those big roller coasters of energy, which can be very um, hard on our cortisol and adrenal glands, and it can cause a uh, cascade of um, effects on our sleep cycle. And of course, staying hydrated with electrolytes um, is very important for blood sugar regulation as well. So making anti-inflammatory food choices, uh, really diversifying the diet, making sure we're getting in those magnesium rich foods that I just mentioned, um, increasing our whole grains, our probiotic and our prebiotic rich foods. So some prebiotic rich foods, if you're unfamiliar, would be like onions, leeks, broccoli, um, all of those things. Usually it's going to be a lot of uh, cruciferous vegetables, high fiber vegetables. I love carrots. Um, and then also focus on quality protein. So whether you're plant-based or you're on an omnivorous diet, definitely focus on where your protein is coming from. Um, focusing on organic, grass-fed, pasture-raised, local as possible. Uh, those are just some of my top tips there for sleep and recovery. And basically that is just um, for anti-inflammatory food choices, that's just making sure that, you know, the quality is there. So avoiding processed foods, avoiding all those things too, like seed oils, those can be highly inflammatory, like palm oil, sunflower oil, um, uh, rapeseed oil, canola oil, those things. Um, addressing nutrient deficiencies, always, you know, checking in with your primary care physician, or your OBGYN, if you wanna check out your hormones, even through your primary care, you can do that as well. But I always suggest people get functional tests done that can really look at you know, where your nutrient levels are um, you know, functionally, where they are now, instead of sometimes our blood tests don't actually give us the full picture or sometimes salivary tests don't give us the full picture. So utilizing things like hair tests, stool tests, those could be great tools uh, for analyzing if you have any underlying deficiencies, specifically if you have iron deficiency, uh, like anemias, those types of things are definitely correlated with poorer sleep and poorer recovery. So making sure that your iron levels are optimal and your B vitamin levels and those types of things. And then lastly for nutrition, a big one for me is uh, limiting your alcohol intake. Um, so alcohol in any form and in any amount is actually pro-inflammatory. Um, and it impacts our hormone level, our metabolic functions, and our sleep quality. Um, there's even studies coming out that as little as one drink a day can actually increase your chances of certain cancers by percents, um, you know, one, two, three percent. And that's, that's a big deal. So by just limiting your alcohol or avoiding it entirely can really make a huge impact just on your overall health. Um, and we're talking about inflammation and we're talking about metabolic function and of course, sleep quality and recovery. Um, some other things I just wanted to mention too. So we could be optimizing our sleep and recovery through the diet, also through eating melatonin rich foods. So melatonin is a hormone that many think is just correlated with sleep, but it's actually found to do a number of extraordinary things in the body. Um, research has found it's actually connected to being a highly anti-inflammatory uh, substance. It's an antioxidant, it's anti-cancer, it's used a lot of times uh, for cancer patients in general. Um, it's neuroprotective, um, which means it's protecting our brains, uh, all that neurological function. Um, it's cardioprotective, so it's protecting our hearts. Um, it also helps regulate our metabolism. And then, of course, it helps to regulate our circadian rhythm. So by eat, eating these foods, by integrating them into your diet, uh, by having a melatonin-rich snack, you know, before bed as your uh, dessert of choice, can really be a um, proactive way to support your sleep and recovery cycles. So a few of my favorites listed here, you know, kiwi, 
uh, white rice, walnuts, uh, fatty fish, um, tart cherry, and then a few herbal shout outs that definitely um, research has shown has been very supportive for our sleep wake cycle. So things like chamomile, passion flower, and valerian. Um, and then I also have a note here at the bottom, you know, some people really do well with eating a high protein snack before bed as well as having a melatonin rich snack. So one way I like to get those in together is actually making a tart cherry jello. I make a homemade jello using a grass fed, really well sourced gelatin. Um, and then I use tart cherry juice, you know, an organic tart cherry juice. I don't sweeten it at all. Um, and I have a cube of that before bed and it's about four grams of, of protein um, and a good serving of melatonin. So it's really just supporting that sleep cycle. So that is just something for you to consider. So next I wanted to go over some stress reduction techniques to support our sleep. So reducing stress levels um, physically lowers the amount of inflammation in our bodies. Um, so integrating, you know, one of these techniques into your nighttime routine or your bedtime ritual can really be a, just a supportive, again, proactive way um, that we're going to be addressing some of these um, reasons why maybe you are not sleeping. So for instance, journaling. Journaling could be a great way to just mind dump at the end of the day, making to-do lists for the days to come. Um, this can just be a great way to mentally, you know, take the load off before you are going to bed so that you can have deeper sleep and more restful sleep. People find, you know, meditating to also, of course, be incredibly supportive for our brain health, but also to help downregulate the nervous system and help us fall asleep. There's also applications like Calm and Headspace that you could definitely explore to help support this. Um, regular movement like Tai Chi, yoga, stretching before bed can be very helpful as well as somatic movements. I definitely um, invite you to look into somatic movements if you are someone also that is moving with any physical or emotional um, conditions as a lot of these things can be stored very deep in the body and sometimes require just deeper types of intentional movements. And that's exactly what somatic movements can be for someone and very supportive in that way. As well as deep breathing techniques, things like box breath, four, seven, eight breaths, um, utilizing those types of breathing techniques and just breathing into your body and really grounding down. Nature bathing, you know, being outside in nature has been correlated with calming the nervous system. So if you're able to open a window, look outside, look at the trees um, as you're falling asleep, that's very supportive. Sound therapy, music. Um, I also like binaural beats. Um, I like to utilize um, just, you know, white noise machines if people need a little bit of noise in the background instead of, you know, using a TV or something with a screen that could potentially have a blue light that could be disruptive. So utilizing something like that could be very helpful. Um, and then, of course, taking relaxing nervine, relaxing nervine and adaptogenic herbs. Um, so let's talk about those specific types of herbs um, now. So for herbal supports for sleep and recovery, as I said, we're gonna be really diving into Nervine's adaptogens, sedatives, and relaxants. So luckily, you know, these specific category of herbs um, are there to support just this. Nervines are there to nourish our nervous systems. They reduce that mental tension, that physical tension. They can help with things um, like restless legs, restless body, restless mind. All of those things can be connected to the nervous system. So um, a few of our favorite blends that we have, you know, take the edge off or take the edge off tincture. Just was using it. Love this. Uh, stop your whining um, is another great option here. Ginseng is going to be a stimulating nervine. So I wanted to put this one in there just to show you guys nervines can also be stimulating as well as relaxing. So ginseng is one that we have that is a stimulating nervine. And then lion's mane, um, you know, lion's mane itself is just such a fantastic uh, mushroom. 
it actually has been found in research to help regrow uh, nerve endings in our brains. So just to show you how nourishing it can be to our nervous system right there. Um, so adaptogens, that's going to be the next um, herbs that we're going to speak about. So those improve the body's ability to respond to stress, as well as improve our resilience to stress. So this means that the next time that we get stressed or sick or anxious or irritable, hopefully our bodies will be able to regulate our cortisol uh, levels just a little bit better so that we don't, you know, fly off the handle as easily. So we don't get hangry as easily. So we don't get, you know, just these big emotional wide springs as easily or just stressed out in general. Um, so utilizing adaptogens every single day is really the name of the game with adaptogens. Um, they're really there, you know, they nourish us deeply. They nourish our adrenal glands, um, that whole uh, hormonal cascade. So taking them consistently is really, again, the name of the game. Things like ashwagandha, um, again, stop your whining. Um, oh, I did want to mention with ashwagandha specifically, as I said before, with the adrenal cocktails, ashwagandha is a, an adaptogen that has been highlighted um, through research and really just, you know, through social media and everything as being this herb for sleep. Um, and while it is, yes, promoting uh, restful sleep, it is not going to make you sleepy. So I just wanted to debunk that myth that ashwagandha can be sedative. It's actually not a sedative herb, but taking it at nighttime will promote better sleep cycles. So that is a great one to be utilizing every single night, kind of in your nightcap routine or in your adrenal cocktail. You can utilize it really any time of the day because again, it won't make you sleepy. Um, whereas something like stop your whining will make you um, downregulate your nervous system and definitely give you that more relaxing effect. But also it has adaptogens in there that are going to be nourishing to our adrenal glands and just help us respond better to stress. Also Shashandra, Reishi, another functional mushroom, and then Tulsi, which is holy basil. Um, sedatives and relaxants, of course, we're going to be talking about down-regulating the nervous system, grounding our bodies, helping us get ready for bed, for sleep and recovery. So it reduces that anxiety and promotes our restful sleep. So we're thinking about the chill the F out, which is going to be the cacao and the peppermint, uh, do not disturb, um, and take the edge off tincture, of course, there as well, which is one I actually like to keep on my bedside table that you can just dose throughout the night. You know, if you're someone that wakes up, helps you really just get back to sleep. So as I said, what to do, you know, take your sleep supporting botanicals every single day. We like to say around three weeks time is really the sweet spot of taking them consistently to start to see the full therapeutic effects, although you will definitely start to feel them before. Um, everybody is different, you know, we're unique in our metabolism. So it's gonna take everybody's body a different amount of time to feel the full effects of these herbs. But when it comes to sedatives and relaxants, those are the ones you should definitely be feeling, you know, within a couple of hours, you're starting to feel down-regulated um, and relaxed. So let's review. I know we went over a lot today, but tips for optimizing our sleep and recovery, you know, improving our sleep hygiene. As I said, the environment in which we sleep is just so critical to um, how our sleep quality is going to be in our recovery process. So hydrating with electrolytes, making sure we're adding back in electrolytes, we're eating magnesium rich foods, we're utilizing magnesium either orally or topically um, or taking magnesium baths. Being mindful of your food choices. So, you know, making those anti-inflammatory food choices, avoiding refined processed foods when possible, um, getting a good amount of uh, diverse amount too of fruits and vegetables in your diet every single day. Um, we're also reducing um, alcohol and caffeine intake, you know, especially later in the day with caffeine. And practicing stress reduction techniques, so those that I mentioned before, journaling, meditating, uh, tai chi, somatic movements, there's really so many that you can do. Um, but definitely, you know, reaching out to extra support if you're someone that's extremely anxious or you need professional support, that can also be a great way to help support your stress levels as well. 
And then, of course, utilizing our Nervine and adaptogenic herbs daily, and then utilizing our sedatives and relaxants as needed at night to really just support falling asleep and staying asleep throughout the evening. Awesome. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed that uh, presentation there about optimizing our sleep. Um, I also just wanted to say, uh, just remember, you know, stay active every day, keep up with personal hygiene, take your herbs, support your emotional health with creative outlets, social interaction, um, you know, all of those things too, to help support your sleep as well. But I'd love to um, talk to you guys further about your questions that you guys have. Um, and of course, throwing it out there, you know, getting to the root cause of your sleep issues um, is really just important for your overall health. So as I noted earlier, I do offer consultations if you want to dive deeper into, you know, the root cause of why you may be having these sleep disturbances, why you're not recovering as well as you'd like from illnesses, um, you know, getting sick over and over, those types of things. We can definitely talk through that in consultations. Um, so you can book that with me through our website. So let's go back and answer a few of your questions. I saw a bunch coming in here today. I love it. So let's start out with, um, here we go. So uh, would you repeat how to make the tart cherry jello? Yes, of course. So I like to use Perfect Supplements Gelatin. So that's the brand, Perfect Supplements. They're very well sourced. Um, I definitely, um, they're grass fed. I try and find the highest quality sources of animal proteins whenever I am indulging in animal proteins. So you basically just use, I think it's about um, four cups of juice to about a quarter cup of gelatin powder. And you simply, you literally just uh, heat up your juice and dissolve in your, your bloomed gelatin powder. And I just follow the instructions right there on their website. They also have uh, instructions on there as well. Pour it into a dish, just like you would any other jello. And then I just cut it into cubes and enjoy them right before bed. And feel free to add other herbs in there as well. I sometimes put my stop your whining right into the juice too, uh, just to also get the motherwort, the jujube, or sorry, the jujube date, um, just, you know, those other um, sleep promoting herbs in there as much as possible. Awesome. So is there a limit to how many herbs I can mix together or consume in one day? That's a great question. So we always tell people to start low and slow with their blends. Um, every body is unique. Um, we also want to make sure that your blends are supporting you in the best way possible. So, you know, start out with one or two at each sitting. Um, you can take, you know, one or two at each sitting throughout the day. So, um, you know, I would say probably three times throughout the day would be appropriate to start. And then you can continue to stack from there. Um, you know, in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine as well, formulations are quite complicated, you know, with 10, 15, 20 herbs even or more. So our herbs are very much simplified formulas. So they can really get uh, to the point and pack a punch as far as the herbal support that they offer. So feel free eventually to start to stack them together, but I would definitely say start low and slow, start dose appropriate. You know, you wanna start with um, a teaspoon at a time, which is going to be two of our golden spoon scoops at a time um, just to start. Oh, I had a question come in. Is there any more info on somatic therapy? You can definitely look into somatic uh, therapists in your area, or there's definitely home movements you can do yourself uh, that could be supportive. But um, I'm not a professional in somatic therapy, but I do utilize it. Um, I like to just utilize uh, specific movements where I can be in bed um, and just like stack that together with my nighttime routine. So um, where I'm already in bed, relaxing and those types of things. But all right, so I hope everyone got their discount code. Thank you guys again so much and make sure to join us um, on Instagram, subscribe to us on our email. And if I didn't get to your question today, feel free to email us at hi at apothecary.co. Um, if you have any other questions regarding today's presentation or any questions in general, um, and join us next week for our IG Live. We'll be talking all about Take the Edge Off Tincture. 
Um, and also we'll have a dosing 101 class too, if you have any further questions and love to see you in future classes. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Hope you have a great day.